hey welcome back as we continue with the daraja apa integration now we are done the mpesa sdk push now there's this is this part still on the mpesa express which which includes the sdk push now you see when you you've done an sdk push and you've gotten the callback url you've stored it in the data now remember this point where you where when you you call the sdk push you can still check the status if it is successful or or it has been cancelled or this uh, or if there's fuliza or something now this is called the query query transaction now query transaction is where you ask in the sdk push questions like are you done done uh, is the transaction still complete like that so you can check it or you can create something like a loader that checks each and every time on the stage where the sdk push is now to do this you will need to click here on the okay on the api now this is the express query now this is what you do i have already created the query and what is required now i'm going to explain the code on how it is now from this point uh we need to include the access token you see the access token doesn't have a variable now we need to include the access token that's remind me of that point where i said um, in order to carry any mpesa sdk request mpesa sdk you know the daraja api request you will always need an access token now we need to include still on this query transaction our access token file so include let me do this let me add, add a comment. comment include include the access token file let's do this uh -huh. include access token file then this is where it will get the access token now let's get the query url you can come here remember when you click api then you click mpesa express then query then this sorry for that this is where you will get the query url then paste it here remember the short code where you got it from the other video then the pass key now let's do this we have this now in order to do the query to query any transaction you need uh, uh the business short code the password which is encrypted from the business short code pass key and the timestamp which is here then you need the checkout request id now the checkout request id this is the it's you get it from the json no the response the response data after you've carried an sdk push now this is our checkout id request now in order to get this checkout id request you can do this you can get it from the callback url which is which is later after a transaction has been done but you can still come here to your sdk where is my sdk you can come here from your sdk data here let's say let's do this data then decode decode the what is it decode this the response after that you can do this you can do this let me cancel this you can do this you can come here see here merchant id then check out request now you can get the checkout request checkout request which is this now this is our checkout request let's echo the checkout request echo the checkout request mm -hmm. checkout request now this is the checkout request let's try the sdk push again so that we can get the checkout requests only now let's do this we can get the checkout request only if there is a successful request or so this is an error you can check an error 
so you can check the response now you'll only get if there is uh, the mm, if the request was successful you can check like this if the response could is it a string or a data let me check if it is a string or an integer so it's a string you can do this zero and you can do this and you can echo here the request of so what i've actually done here i've checked i have i will only echo the request id if the re uh, request was successful now let's let's get the request id now let me do this mm, let me add something here mm, request id not like that let me do this the checkout request id Check a request ID for this transaction is do this is equals to this. Now it will echo here the checkout ID after this statement. Now let's test this. Now let it to load so that it can carry the SDK push undefined code variable let me fix that bug now i've not included here and here. now let's do it again which now the check what id class response is undefined property now let's echo the let's echo the um, what is it this echo the response unlock subscribe it means that the previous request was successful so let us wait for a while so that we can carry out the next request let me do this now you see let me remove this let's wait for a while then let's request it again now we have gotten the checkout request so the checkout request for this transaction is this now let's get this let's get the this checkout request id which we need to query to check if the transaction was successful or it was new. let me check on the my my mpesa request which is here I want to pay let me first complete the payment so that we can check the response uh, now let's do this let's get the checkout request here id then paste it here we can paste it here so that we can check let's echo the response the response then let's name let's comment the code now here in the checkout response this let me write here this is a unique unique id that is generated when when the when when there is a no when the sdk request mm, request is initiated successful now this is what you place it here now let us come here and check the query let us check the query so that we can get the data now the query php now 
this is what we have gotten the service has been accepted successfully the merchant request is this now we have gotten the result code as 1000 uh, now it means that is not successful because when you come here mm, to the docs let comes to the docs so that we can get all the response that when you request and and their meaning now let me come here then unsuccessful structure i think they have not included it here but me i tested it and i came up with this now here is what the successful transaction mean now if you come here you get the which is the result code this one the result code if the result code is set now get the result code information now these are the message and the meaning of what the each result code means let me cancel let me do this now then if you get 10 30 it means timeout was completed during transaction now uh, the result code is result code 1032 means that the user user cancelled the transaction the transaction has been cancelled by the user now if you get one it means the balance the balance of the user the impesa balance of the users is insufficient now if you get zero it means that you have a successful transaction now let us echo the message the message now let's do this now you see timeout is completed that's what that's why we got the error error 30 now let me add this that's why we got error 30 10 37 now 10 32 it means transaction has been current now one one means insufficient balance and zero means transaction is successful now let us reload you can see our our error code is 1032 now let us test that successful transaction let's reload again the mpesa sdk uh, mpesa sdk let us reload it so that we can get now there is our SDK. Let me complete the payment. So you can see if the code has changed. I've completed the payment. Now let us wait. Let us reload this. Let us for the success message. Now there is the message. Now let us confirm the result called and the message which is given us. Now you have seen timeout has been completed. Now this is what we have done. We have not gotten the the new checkout ID. Let's paste it here so that we can check the status of the checkout ID. Now let us return back again. Then reload this. You see transaction is successful. Now we have checked the the SDK status now that's how you can check the um, MPESA SDK query you can query to check if it has been cancelled or insufficient funds so you can update it from your database now here are the messages now what I'm go actually going to do I'm going now to update our github project here now let's do what we'll let's do Git add git commit and git push origin main. Now I see now has been it has been updated successful now let us reload now here it's our query p 
php now that's where we're going to stop to this video and from the next video what we are going to do we're going to check out check out the customer to business customer to business api now that's where we're going to do our thing now see you in my next video bye